At this time, I'd like to call the uh, June Board of Commissioners meeting to order. Uh, ask that you stand as Commissioner Langley does the invocation and Commissioner Walker will lead us in the pledge. Let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we are grateful and thankful for the opportunity to assemble here one more time. Lead and guide us in all the decisions that we make on this evening. Father, let them be pleasing in thy sight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Please place the flag. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. This time I ask that you mute or either turn off your smartphone. Uh, item number C is conf conflict of interest disclosure. Does any commissioner have a conflict? Hearing none. Uh, item number D is the approval of the agenda. I'll entertain a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Second. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Thank you. Uh, now we're down to items for presentation. The first is the service award presentation, Dolores. Good afternoon, Mr. Chairman, commissioners. We have some Beaufort County employees that we would like to recognize uh, tonight for their service to Beaufort County. We have uh, one employee here tonight, Ms. Holly Acklin, and she's with the Tax Collector's Office, and she will receive her 15-year award. of other employees that are not here that I would like to recognize. We have Mr. Ryan Davis from Emergency Medical Services um, with his five-year award, and Mr. Charles Pugh with the Water District, who also has five years. Thank you very much. The North Carolina Department of Labor Workplace Safety Award. Jennifer? We have a number of awards, and the way these awards are given is they are rate of days away from work, and they have to be at least 50% below the industry average, and that's compared to all other industries in North Carolina that are local government. So tonight, for the sixth consecutive year, we have the administrative offices, and it comes with a plaque. So I don't know if you uh, want to, Katie. And we also have for... The first year goal is emergency services. <laughs> and then we have for the first year silver, we have the sheriff's office. I'm not sure if anybody's here for that. And we have um, also for the third consecutive year goal health department. So that's 2021 and I also have their 2020. And for social services, we have the first year silver is 2021, and then 2020, they had a gold award. Oh. And lastly, for gold, we have public works. What? I'll give it to them as I'm walking out. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. Congratulations to uh, each one of the departments. Uh, item number three is school security presentation. Uh, Brian. 
Thank you, Mr. Chairman. At the last meeting, the board asked if the superintendent of schools um, and his security um, person would come and give you an update. So they're here tonight. Uh, good evening. Good evening. I'd like to introduce uh, Captain Darren Hall with Outlaw Universal Security. And just wanted to come in under recent events and explain to you that uh, we've been very pleased with Allied this year. Congratulations to you and your team. Thank you. uh, our schools have been well protected this year. Our parents have been very, very pleased with what they've seen in the car rider lines and inside of our schools, at our games, at our activities. Uh, but to get to the point, we're very well protected in our schools. Our officers are armed. Uh, we currently have one going through training at one of our schools. Uh, so at the start of next year, we should have 13 armed officers. Uh, we have video in all of our schools. We have locking mechanisms to all of our doors. Um, but we are currently looking at an opportunity to really do a safety evaluation of all of our school campuses now. Uh, and when we have that done, we'll bring that back to you to, to talk through together. Uh, did you want to talk about Allied a little bit? Yes, I'm, I'm with Allied uh, Universal. Uh, beforehand, I worked with the Sheriff's Office. I was there for about 16 years. And a good chunk of that, I was in the schools working at the SRO. Uh, I made the move to Allied, and uh, okay, I'm sorry. I made the move to Allied. We got a good group of guys and girls that came aboard to work with us. A lot of them actually worked with the sheriff's office or the local PD uh, prior to coming on with Allied. Uh, we do the exact same training that police departments do. Sheriff's office uh, does to keep our state mandate, mandatory uh, training valid, keep our certification up. Uh, we do firearms training. Uh, we, we actually got a uh, week-long SRO school course going on next week. Uh, that's a 40-hour course, and that gets the officers that haven't already been through the SRO school up to par with search and seizure and different kind of laws that go on in a school building that's different than dealing with a juvenile off-campus on, on the street. Uh, so they're going to be going through that, and uh, during that course, they'll, they'll learn a lot about school safety and you know, the active shooter events and, and study some of those scenarios. Mm -hmm. That's the question I had, Jerry. This is the question I had last week. All the all the external doors at all of the schools are secured. They have locking mechanisms to them. We ask that the SROs check them throughout the course of the day. We also ask our employees not to leave them propped. We ask that they're constantly monitored. Uh, but one thing that we really do need to look at is access onto our campuses. Uh, specifically, what type of fence line structures might we need to really contain some of our elementary environments? Uh, but right now, we do believe that we're secured in our buildings. We just need to make sure that the behaviors of the adults and the children maintain that security. Thank you. Uh, John? Just a question. On, given the events down in Texas, um, if there happened, God forbid, happened to be an active shooter situation, say at Southside, Who's going to be end up being in charge? Is it going to be the sheriff, or are we going to end up with a situation like we had down in Texas? The, the school resource officer on campus at Southside, they're going to be the first responder. They're in that building. They're going to respond to the threat. They're going to right. hopefully eliminate the threat. Then the sheriff's office and all other agencies are going to show up, and it's my understanding that, that the sheriff's office will take control from that point okay. forward as far as so, so unlike down in Texas, you wouldn't be making the call? I would be assisting in any way possible with right. that. Okay. Now, the Sheriff's Department would help set up an incident command center. Okay. Mm -hmm. Randy? Uh, the, the one um, SRO that's not approved yet for uh, having a weapon, is that being held up somewhere or down the line or just? Uh, no, there's actually a different individual being trained for next school year. And so how we work that out is the actual officer who was there um, this year stepped out. And so we hired another person through Allied, and that person was being trained. So we rotated uh, Captain Hall and other people into the building. Um, but specifically, we'll be ready with 13 officers next year. Yeah, I guess anybody's dropping the ball, you, you need to be able to put this on paper that this is not being done like somewhere else and it's causing us a problem. Because you don't want to show up later on the news. I completely understand. Yeah. One of the things we have to be careful is not releasing the name of the school uh, for security reason. I would think would be a good idea. Right. Mm -hmm. Other questions? Thank you, Thank gentlemen, you very much. Very much. Thank you.
The next item is a resolution honoring the Reverend Robert Caton. Uh, I'm going to I'm going to read this. Uh, hopefully, we can move through it without taking up too much time. It says, whereas the Board of Commissioners of Beaufort County and its citizens lost a dedicated public servant with the death of the Reverend Robert Burns Caton on Sunday, May the 8th, 2022. Whereas Reverend Caton self selflessly served Beaufort County as a commissioner for eight years beginning in 2004 through 2012. Whereas Reverend Caton was active in ministry for 51 years in the local district, regional, and general church, feeling a calling to preach the gospel and serve God's people in the local church. Whereas Reverend Caton was active in civic organizations serving on the Beaufort County Community College Board of Trustees and spent time sh uh, championing causes involving agriculture, transportation, rural health issues, and economic development. Whereas Reverend Caton carried out his responsibilities as a public servant with a zeal and optimism for which he will be remembered as he sought contingently to make this county a better place to live and work. Whereas Beaufort County and his people have benefited from Reverend Caton's knowledge, leadership, and concern for his fellow citizens, and his contributions will forever serve as an example of untiring and dedicated public service. Whereas the Beaufort County Board of Commissioners is desirous and communicate in an official way its deep gratitude for the service of one of its own members, the sorrow at the loss of the member to both his family and the community, and to remember the manner in which he carried himself in his service to the public. Now, therefore, be it resolved that this resolution be forwarded to the family of Reverend Robert Caton with the express sympathy of the members of this board. Further, it be resolved by the Beaufort County Board of Commissioners that it hereby expresses its gratitude to those family members for having shared so much of his life with and for the benefit of the people of Beaufort County. Furthermore, be it resolved that Beaufort County hereby takes pride in honoring the service of Reverend Robert Caton and expresses its appreciation for his many contributions to Beaufort County. Be it further resolved that it hereby expresses on behalf of the citizens of Beaufort County deep appreciation and gratitude for the gifts of time, ability, and commitment made by Reverend Caton in carrying out the duties of this board. Adopted this the sixth day of June 2021. I'll entertain a motion to approve this resolution. So Second. Okay. Motion and a second. All those in favor, please raise your right hand. Thank you. All right, we're down now to uh, two public hearings. The uh, first one is involving the town of Bath as it relates to the ER rescue service uh, districts. I need a motion to go into the public uh, hearing. So moved. No second. Okay, all those in favor, raise your right hand. Okay, Brian, I'll turn it over to you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. This is a public hearing to receive comments from the public regarding including the territory within the corporate limits of the town of Bath in the ER Emergency Services Tax District. As you recall, the board did this several years ago with the town of Pantega. Um, the town of Bath is currently served by EMS services, but it is not taxed within the district. Um, the way Buffer County has EMS services provided is through a special service taxing district. Um, and in the Bath area, it's five cent in the district. The town of Bath, instead of the county taxing that, they were providing those funds out of their general fund in the equivalent of five cent per valuation on there in their corporate limits. They have asked, as is required by statute, because you cannot go into a municipality and impose a special service district without the approval of the municipality. So they have asked, and you have the resolution on page 11, asking you to include them in that special service district and to essentially start, start taking over taxing that on the 1st of July. Um, the, um, the public hearings uh, or the public notice has been made as well as sending out a copy of the notice and the copies of the maps 
uh, that are included in the agenda item that show the proposed the current district and the proposed district. The only difference is it includes the, the corporate limits of the town of Bath. Um, those have been sent to all taxpayers within the municipal limits of the town of Bath. Um, and this is the, the last part where you would hear comments from the public about including them in that district, we say it has to be, and then you'd have the opportunity to vote on doing that. I'll answer any questions you may have when you have up poll here. Okay, uh, we had no one sign up for the uh, for the public hearing as it related to the uh, changing of the tax uh, in Bath. Is there anyone here that would like to comment? Okay, hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to come out of the uh, so moved. public hearing. Second. Motion second. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Okay, the uh, next public hearing is on our... Uh, Mr. Chairman, if I could get action from you, we, we would need to move forward with that. Okay. All right, all those in favor, raise your right hand. Sorry, Brian. Okay, now we're down to the uh, budget public hearing for the 2022-2023 uh, uh, budget year. I uh, need a motion to go into the uh, public hearing. So moved. Second. Second. All right. All those in favor, raise your right hand. All right. Brian, do you want to make your comments? Yes, sir. I'd like to tee it up for you. Um, so, as you recall, the manager's recommended budget was presented to the board on May the 16th of this year. Budget workshops were held by the board on May 19th, 24th, 26th, and the 31st. During those budget workshops, the board made changes to the manager's recommended budget. You'll see on page 16 and 17 the changes that were made to the manager's recommended budget. Um, you also have included on page 11, I mean on page 18, the public notice of the public hearing. And you have on page 19 the proposed budget ordinance based on the changes that the board made to the manager's recommended budget. You are required to hold at least one public hearing by statute before you adopt the budget, and that's what this public hearing tonight is designed to do. Thank you. Okay, at this time we'll have the uh, comments. Uh, the first one is uh, Tandy. Thank you, Commissioners, for allowing me to speak today. My name is Tandy Dunn. I watched the uh, budget process online um, because I had other commitments, and I was very happy to see as we were moving along that we're going to have about $124,000 that weren't being spent, and then all of a sudden we're $22,000 in the hole. Uh, part of that was $90,000 for the propaganda manager. Part of that was the two deputy sheriff positions. And I'm concerned because several times some of these items were voted down and then at the end they were added. Uh, I really felt that the Sheriff's Department, I don't know how their staffing is now, but I didn't think it was the correct time to add more people because we've got a new sheriff coming in and we don't know what the new sheriff's going to do. And I think Commissioner Langley will agree with me. Back in 1986 when we were both deputies, there were only five deputies on the road. Uh, and the department was about maybe 46 people total. And now they still fire deputies on the road, and there's so many people in back office and doing other things now that I think that maybe some money could have been saved if we had just held out. So I, I implore you to, when you do your budget, to look at saving money and giving back to our citizens of Beaufort County and not just spending it willy-nilly. Thank you. Thank you. Um, the next one is uh, Betsy. I'm sorry. Patricia. Patricia. I apologize. I was getting the other public comments. Good evening, commissioners and Beaufort County taxpayers. The country is in a recession, the worst inflation in 40 years. Gas prices are at an all-time high. Businesses are closing. U.S. citizens are losing money. They're living paycheck to paycheck. Beaufort County is increasing its budget by approximately 8%, which includes a part-time recycle enforcer at $25,000, a communication director for $95,000, and nobody seems to know what their responsibilities are. 
We bought a trailer for $198,000, but we don't have a, a truck to pull it. We have aerial photography for reevaluation at $39,355.33 a year, and it's not even time for reevaluation. Why are we doing this on a yearly basis when it's not time for reevaluation? Why do we need this to begin with? We have $847,000 to plan for a possible MAGA site for solid waste disposal. We have an increase in the water department of 5%, an increase in the solid waste department of 5%. We have $15,000 a year for a tech program for people who do not live in Beaufort County to monitor their water. Why am I, as a taxpayer, offering this for somebody that does not live in Beaufort County and is not paying taxes? We had COVID hazard pay. What was that? Approximately $2,000 per person for county employees. Private sector individuals work through COVID if they're lucky enough to keep their job and they did not get hazard pay. How much did we spend? Our government is growing while the productive taxpaying citizens of Beaufort County, that population is decreasing. I want to ask a question. How many county commissioners are willing to cut taxes for one year? There should be five of you willing to do that. I'm asking the county commissioners to think about the private sector, how our pocketbooks are affected. Should the government be growing while the private sector is shrinking? Dom? Good evening. My name is Dawn Slan. I'm a resident of Beaufort County, a small business owner, and I'm still a taxpayer. To clarify, I'm not the current commissioner in a skirt, Liz Cheney, or an idiot. I have now watched two cycles of the budget review, and I've done a historical review of past budget. It appears that no matter what changes or requests are made to the budget throughout this review period, there are commissioners sitting on this board that have never voted to approve the annual county budget. These same commissioners expect those individuals paid by and services funded by that budget to work at the same rate of pay or funding as last year and in some cases longer than that. This because they don't believe that the county budget ought to keep up with the rate of inflation and this because taxpayers don't get raises that keep up with inflation. First, I don't believe the personal taxpayer financial information is available to the commissioner, so speaking for everyone based on the voices in their personal choir is not representative of the entire county. Secondly, most businesses are experiencing unprecedented decrease in workforce to the point that some are shutting down because they cannot find people to work. While you may not be able to meet the full amount of every request of increase, to continue thinking that people are going to continue to work with no return on their personal time and effort investment is a plan that is sure to fail. If those commissioners that are intent on giving back to the taxpayers, then maybe they should consider giving up their salaries and the cost of their benefits back to the budget. At the end of the day, the commissioners work for the taxpayers of Beaufort County, all of them, regardless of party affiliation or economic stature. The budget should be targeted to provide the most value to the county as paid by the taxpayer. For the most part, the majority of this board understands that. For those that refuse to vote for a budget, even after all of the hoop jumping they required, do not have the best interest of the taxpayer or the county at heart. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else that would like to speak to the uh, to the next year's budget? Okay, hearing none. I at this time I'll entertain a motion to approve the uh, budget. Well, 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 you've got to come out. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay, I need a motion to come out of uh, the, the public hearing. So, so move. No, second. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Okay. Now, entertain a motion to... Well, why don't we comment on the budget before we entertain motions? That, that's fine. That's fine. Well, what would be wrong with that? You want to lead, lead off? Well, yeah. You, you know, I wore a... a, a a black tie and a black coat today for a very good reason. This particular budget is the largest 
spending increase that we have ever had in the history of Beaufort County. It sets a record. Uh, now, uh, taxes didn't go up simply because these commissioners are taking the money out of other funds and other places. You can only do that so long. That caught the city of Washington this year. They're getting to the point they're having to raise taxes fairly high because they suddenly ran out of money. Same thing can happen to us. I'm disappointed, and the reason I'm wearing black is, is, to, is because it is a, is a black day in Beaufort County. Um, the um, budget has huge spending increases, a million dollars to guarantee uh, uh, the, that students can go to the community college without having to pay even one dime is pure socialism. We funded that for four years in this budget. Why would you fund it for four years in this budget? Does, that does not make a lick of sense. Uh, the budget and spending increase, according to my figures, went up $5,700,000. That's, uh, in terms of taxes, you've had a 9.3% increase in taxes that you are going to find out about in a year or two. After the people that are voting to spend this money are off the board, they're going to leave you a present that somebody else is going to have to deal with. All spending increases when you're doing a, a continuation budget. And that's what we do. We don't, we don't try to correct the mistakes that we made in years past when we do the budget. We continue to fund them. And all increases in a continuation budget eventually find their way to increase taxes. It may take a few years, but it's coming at you. We added three employees, ten police cars that we don't need. Um, so this, this is not a good budget. These commissioners sat here. Nobody tried to save anything. Nobody wanted to look at alternatives. Oh, and by the way, for the person who was up here claiming that I've never voted for a budget, I have voted for a budget. I just haven't voted for these awful budgets that have come about in the last eight or ten years since we got our supposed conservatives on the board. We found out they can spend more money than the people who are carrying the tag as liberal. So, yeah, you're right. I'm not going to vote for this budget. Other comments? I, I, I want to say this. I remember a few years ago when we started talking about early college. That was socialism. Today we got kids going to school, uh, going to college, got an associate degree. And I think if you talk about investing in, in wasting taxpayers' money, I can't think of no better program than both for Promise. That's for every citizen, every child in this county that lives in this county that want to go to school, they got the opportunity to go. Whether you want your child to go or not, that's up to you. But I think it's one of the greatest things that ever happened. Even I got to say this, Mr. Richardson, even you didn't vote for early college. You benefited from it. And I'm glad you did. I'm so grateful that you did. And I hope you benefit from this both of promise. Okay. Jerry? I'm just going to add one thing to, to what Commissioner Booth has said. When I served on the Partnership for Children Board, their slogan was, investing in children makes good sense. And that's exactly what we've done. Stan? Yeah, I, I'm not going to, um, uh, I still reserve my right to speak later. Uh, well, we're in the uh, motion process. We're not in the motion process yet. But um, I, I would like to discuss this with the board, just this one issue. <clears throat> one million dollars for both for promise, a great deal. That's for Commissioner Booth. Some of you other commissioners may concur. Do we know for sure that uh, this one million dollars, all of it coming directly from the taxpayer pockets of Beaufort County citizens, will any of that money be going to people here with illegal status in our country, but are moving from the public schools where, as per the Supreme Court, they can go to the uh, primary schools at, uh, at uh, no cost, but there's nothing said that they can go to uh, uh, higher education such as community college at no cost. Will that be protected for people in this country, illegals with illegal status? We haven't discussed that. That has not been made a priority, a parameter in which 
uh, a condition uh, in which we give this money to the community college? Uh, that's a question. And and looking at the uh, the budget, we have since I've been a commissioner, this is the first time that I've seen us. Uh, do fairly large items out of the fund balance that are not reoccurring. One of those being the Beaufort Promise, the $1 million that we just had a discussion on. The other one is the Workman's Compensation Reserve, which allows the, the county to uh, be self-insured and should, uh, according to our projections, show savings to the county uh, in the future. When you back at the 1.6, then the increase is $4.2 million, and it's 6.7%. It's not 8, but it's 6.7%, and the dollar amount is 4.2. Uh, one of the comments that was made earlier is that, you know, our, our workforce is just like a lot of other people in this region. Uh, we we just lost another employee to an adjoining county. Uh, we have to, we have to make sure that the skills that we need, the professional skills, that we pay our employees and we look out for them as it relates to the benefit. And so in this budget, it does include a five percent uh, increase, salary increase, or cost of living uh, increase. <laughs> When, it, when you look at the number of employees that are being added uh, in the sheriff's office, we are increasing that by two. Uh, you know, I, I've, I've heard the comments, but I, I'm one of the ones that uh, believes that we need the expanded uh, law enforcement. It's true, we're going to have a new sheriff that's going to be elected and uh, take office December the 1st. But we also need to make sure that we have the support in the schools as it relates to the school resource officers. So by having two, that allows us to have one on the south side and one on the north side that can shuttle back and forth and make contact at each one of those schools uh, when the schools are in session. Um, and of course the county manager, we are adding that one. Uh, that's been discussed several board meetings. We've had requests by commissioners saying, you know, now that we have the equipment, we should be doing more with it so we can, uh, we can educate uh, the public as it relates to solid waste, as it relates to, you know, discussing. Uh, just like tonight, we had the, uh, uh, the superintendent here and our school resource officer uh, supervisor with Allied a lot of possibilities there. I know some people refer to it as a propaganda, but to me, it's a way of us saying exactly what those individuals are doing and what we want the public to hear. It is no propaganda. It is factual information. Um, the Then, uh, you know, when we hear that we should reduce the tax rate 10 percent and give that back to the people, what, what it means is that 10 percent would come out of our reserves. Uh, and the board's policy as it relates to fund balance, our goal has been for a number of years, even before I was elected, 35 percent. Right now, uh, we exceed that by $4.6 million. Now, what, do you, what does our policy say when we exceed our goal? It says we do one of two things, or a combination of the two. It says that we can pay down debt. We just got refinanced. We just completed this past 12 months the refinancing of all of the county's debt, and all of it, Adita, is less than 2%. Is that correct? So the other thing that we can do is put money in capital reserve. We are constantly having to spend money as it relates to the schools and at the community college and also at the county level. So I'm going to propose in July that we bring this up and we discuss where we can put the money in the different reserves, capital reserves. You know, we talk about the solid waste. Uh, we talk about improvements or in addition to the jail. All these things require money. Uh, it's not saying financial 
uh, business to take the money out of the savings and use it to fund operating expenses and knowing that we're going to have to spend some of this money in the next 12 months or 24 months. So uh, I, think, I think it's a good budget. Uh, I realize it's, it's larger than normal, but with inflation at 8%, the cost of the candy as it relates to utilities or as it relates to fuel is the same as it is for everybody in this room. We don't get a discount just because we're, we're a government agency uh, as it relates to that. So uh, I'm going to be supporting the budget, and I'll entertain any other comments. Okay, Jerry. And I, I just need to remind folks of this one thing. We we live in an area where hurricanes are prevalent. And FEMA does not give counties upfront money. Counties have to have the money on hand to do what needs to be done. And then later on, FEMA will reimburse you. So it is important. Sometimes years later. Yeah, sometimes years later. It is important that we maintain a healthy fund balance. So when a, 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 a major storm coming comes, people will be looking to us to help. But what happens if we don't have any money? So we, we have to continue this path that we're on. For many years, we have been reactionary to things. It's time for us to start being progressive with everything concerning this county. I feel this is a good budget, and I'm definitely voting for it. Thank you. Randy? Um, I'm okay with the Beaufort promise. Uh, you know, we, we talk about losing population of Beaufort County, and I think this is a way to keep it. I mean, you got kids going to community college for four years. They're, they're not, they're not going to leave. I mean, they're going to stay here and get some really valuable credit for being there. So I, I'm for that. And in my history of watching uh, the public uh, comments on the budget, I've seen them lined out the door uh, complaining. But if we don't have any more people that complain than we do, I think we're, we're getting close to being okay. Yeah, we, we did a good job cutting some things the other night, and I kind of feel like I, I knew that it was going to be put back at the end. I've seen that happen just about every year. So I would have liked to have kept some of those cuts. But uh, I'm, o I'm okay with the way it is. I hate it that we're, we can't take, send money back. But we do have, we're, we're heading into hurricane season, but there's been a hurricane that's been mentioned, uh, economic hurricane, that none of us know what that means. And we could be, really be headed for that. And when COVID came, we did some things to prepare for COVID. And, and thankfully, we didn't have to use some of those things. But we probably do need to sit on some of this money and see what an economic hurricane looks like. Because we may have to be passing along some you know, funding to help get out of that uh, storm. And of course, we also got regular hurricanes to deal with, too. So Commissioner Langley is right. So uh, I'm okay. I, I'm, I'll hold my nose and vote for it. <laughs> well, you know, how did we accumulate all this $35 million in round numbers? We accumulate it by overtaxing people. That's how we got that big number up there. We don't need that. We're not mandated anywhere to have that much money on hand. Uh, it's just something that the board decided to do, and then it got away from us because suddenly the board found out that we were wealthy and they came out with all of these great ideas for spending money. I'll give you one example of a total excess that's in the budget, aside from the socialism that goes along with a totally free education for everybody. They don't have to, they don't have to put any of themselves into it. They don't have to do any of their own work. Things that are, that are free usually have very little value to the person that's getting them to begin with. But there's a $60,000 farm tractor in this budget. Why is that? Because Beaufort County, for the last 25 years, and I've thought it before, has been in the farming business. We plant seed plots for commercial seed companies. There are other people in Beaufort County that are in the business of planting seed plots for commercial seed companies. There are commercial seed companies and people that sell seed that plant their own plots without the county helping them. There's no reason, and we, oh by the way, we do this in other counties too, 
not just Beaufort County. So there's a $60,000 farm tractor in this budget that is, that is totally, totally abuse of the taxpayer. We should turn this loose, get out of this, and let industry start taking care of itself. And I, one thing I'll say about education, I got an education, I got a good education, I'm proud of my education, but education has been run into the ground. And you see articles on this. We need to get off of the education rant that we have been on because the people that I look around and the people that I come into contact with that are educated aren't really educated. They've just been told they're educated and they've been told they're smart. If there's one place that we're getting taken advantage of in the United States as a whole to say nothing above for county, it is education. Anybody else? <clears throat> Let me uh, address this last issue about Beaufort Promise. Uh, when I first got on this board, I went around and, and visited a number of businesses here in the county, uh, manufacturing principally. And my paradigm at the time was that if you wanted a good job, you had to leave the county and you had to go find it someplace else. Well, it turns out that paradigm was blown up right off the bat because everybody we talked to, every single manufacturing industry said they could grow their business and expand it if they could find the workforce to, to man the machines and the, and the technology that they had. Beaufort Promise is an investment in growing our economy, our tax base in Beaufort County. It's an ability to put our youth to work doing things other than the four-year degree that, that Commissioner Richardson refers to. It's doing the technical stuff, the skilled trades that, that are so needed uh, by our industry here. We are not attracting people from Pitt County to come do that work. And if we don't grow our own, these businesses are going to find out pretty soon that we don't have the workforce. And if they're going to grow, what are they going to do? They're going to pick up roots and go someplace else. Fifty percent of them are owned by international companies. They're not going to just sit here and wait. They're going to go look for better places with better supply of workforce to grow their businesses. This is economic development, Beaufort promises. And so, despite what everybody else wants to say, if we don't do something like this to grow, and by the way, the books and tuition, tuition is covered under Beaufort Promise. Books and everything else that go with it, which actually cost more than tuition, are not covered. So they're coming to, to the party with skin in the game yet. Um, and I think that we need to, to support it. I'm going to support the budget as it stands. Um, and, I, and I hope the rest of you all do too. Stan. My question still remains unanswered by these commissioners in the majority that will give you this budget willy-nilly. I remind you, Hood Richardson and I put forth $2.35 million worth of cuts just in the expansion budget. Yeah, yeah, we, we, we're going through the fund balance to get you 10%. But we did $2.35 million just in the expansion budget. There's another $2 million that we could go and get tonight, but these guys aren't going to talk about it. They're ready to go right now. Now, I'm going to ask you one more time, in regards to the specific question, I would request a specific answer from you commissioners in the majority that will pass this. Will people be using Beaufort Promise that are here in this country illegally? Yes. I think you asked that of the, of the, the president of the college the other day, that specific question. And his response then was, those rules haven't been written, and if that's what we want to do, we can do it. Okay. The question is, then, are you going to do it? Because right now you're giving up the money with no rules written. Generally, when that is done, that's like, and you want to do it later, that's like shutting the door after the uh, barn door after the horse has escaped and is already in the pasture. Mr. Deffrey, I can promise you, rest assure you, that if any child were to better himself, I'm going to support it. Yeah. And, and you need, and let me tell you this, and let, let me tell you this, you go ahead. Thank you for your honesty. Well, I'm, I'm going to be honest with you, and, and I'm going to be honest with you about something else. 
You need to get off of that horse about illegals. That's what breeds hate in, in a community. That's what breeds hate in Texas. That's what breeds hate in uh, these other places. And you've been harping on this stuff, these illegals, they're not going anywhere. You better hope they don't go anywhere because folks like you won't work. Well, let's, let's go back to this for a minute on, on this illegals thing and it breeds hate. That's not the issue at all. It doesn't have anything to do with racial or personal things. Well, you can make it a racial issue if you want to, but my ancestors fought and bled, and I can prove it, in the revolution for this country. So I'm not giving up my heritage because somebody wants to come from South America to live here. We'll move out of the country. No. You move if you don't like it. I'm staying here and I'm going to support those kids that want to go to school and I promise you that I'm going to support them. I'm going to stay here and I don't care if they come from China. If they want to go to college to better themselves, that's what America was built on, making things better for everybody. Now, I'm, I was honest with you and I, I'm not going to change my mind. Yes, if any child want to go to school to better himself, so be it. Commissioner Booth, thank you for your honesty. God bless you. I uh, ask the rest of the commissioners and the majority with you, Commissioner Booth, what is your position on this? They don't have to answer because Commissioner No, they don't. No, they don't. They don't. But they do represent constituents. And this constituency is in full view of what we're doing tonight. They deserve an answer. Give them an answer. A responsible answer. A specific answer. Don't go meandering about about this issue and that issue, hurricanes. Talk about this one question. Give it a specific answer. Mr. Chairman, I make a motion that we approve the 2023, the 2022-23 budget as presented. Mr. Chairman, I think you need to have debate finished before you vote on this. This is the same thing. I'm in. I'm in. Okay, we got a second. Now, we, now, if you want to say something else, go ahead. Well, Commissioner Dethridge asked a question that nobody's been willing to answer except Ed. And they don't have to. That's because they don't have to. They can sit right there, and the public is going to know the answer. Well, why don't you go I, ahead and... I, I've got a, a question. I mean, I thought we did this thing for a four-year increment so we could monitor this thing. Well, can, can we... I mean, it needs to be monitored. Yeah, I mean, if, there's nothing in the motion about monitoring. Well, I thought we did it in a four-year increment so we could. So... Well, the discussion now is, is relates to the budget. It's not about what's good what the restrictions are going to be. I mean, the president of the college said that they had not been written. There is a program in existence called the Beaufort Promise, but this is on top of what is there. Well, it replaces it. Well, this, this Board of County Commissioners can put conditions on any dollar that we appropriate. It's not up to us to wait for the president of the college to decide what he wants to do. We, you know, I, we can we can do that in the I next would, meeting. No, 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 not meeting. after the budget's passed. The manager's going to be in here telling you you can't change it. Well, it's so it's true. Okay, it's not true. Uh, I know it's not true. It's a budget ordinance. Once you pass a budget ordinance, you're going to it's going to be Katie Bar to order to change well, anything. Well, well, uh, Mr. 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 Yes, uh, Mr. Detrich, I understand that. You said after we pass the budget, can't be changed. Are you going to vote for the budget? Answer that. What is that got to do with the debate? You're not Mr. Detrich. That has nothing to do with the debate. You're not Mr. Detrich. Treachery, trickery. Oh, no, answer it. What? Well, yeah, if, 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 Come on. I think you'll find out pretty soon. Oh, I'm okay, you're, okay, you, you want an answer? All right, gentlemen. I have, excuse me, I've, I've we, got a, we got a motion and we have a right. second. All those in, oh, all those oh, in favor. Oh, 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 Commissioner speaking. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, something else. I mean, if you we're in a debate, what else do you want to talk about? I, I was. What else do you want to talk about? Well, first of all, we we since you're asking me, and I, this is the second question I've had. I will answer the first one, and then I'll answer yours. The first question that I was cut off by you, Chairman, and before we've even got to the point of discussing the motion, we haven't done that yet. I mean, you, we well, are discussing it right now. Well, no, you as called you the speak, question. You called you the question immediately while I was uh, speaking to Commissioner Booth, who asked me a specific question: Was I going to support the budget? And I will tell you, after some, uh, putting forth 2.35 million dollars worth of uh, 
Well, work with Hood Richardson, Commissioner Richardson, longtime commissioner, 26 years, worked with them diligently to cut $2.35 million from the expansion budget that, of course, did not pass by many of you. I mean, Frankie, I counted that you voted against us 14 times. But still, we did put that forth. <laughs> we haven't discussed about any cuts now in, in part of the budget that's not the expansion budget, which we could spend hours on tonight. You know, if you will remember, it was my uh, uh, privilege to ask for the uh, manager to take the budget back and cut 5%. Commissioner Walker said that's what we do. So then we launched into doing it. Two of us took it seriously. We got $2.35 million worth of cuts that you guys rejected. And then you put in more. I think uh, Sandy said that you guys got another 22000 thrown in at the end above what was started. Excuse me, I, I withdraw my question. Uh, Mr. Chairman, point of order, I have the floor. I'm not going to be interrupted this time. Okay, <clears throat> so we got 2.35 million. We'd like to do some more tonight. Yes, I'm not going to vote for a budget. Yes. Yes. A budget that you say you want all children to go to school irrespective of their citizenship at all levels of government going forward because it's the right thing to do. America is a big country. We can take them into our bosom. We can afford it. And you taxpayers out there can suck it up. I'm not going to vote for that budget. Thank you. But I will tell you right now, um, uh, Chairman. I think we need to discuss this budget. We haven't even gotten into the meat of it. So I'd like to see you commissioners and the express majority discuss it as well, besides saying, yes, I'm for progression. I am a progressive. All five of you, four of you, however it comes out to be, you're going to proceed in the area, a very progressive area, a, a, a very progressive movement at this time of uncertainty with a recession looming. I think you're making a huge mistake, but you guys go ahead and take a big bite of, off of that uh, well, slimy apple. All right, I have an, I have an amendment to the motion. Uh, and first of all, my numbers are a bit different from the $4 million. I got $5.7 million of increased spending over last year, according to the documents that are within the budget book is what I used. Uh, I move that we remove the farm tractor from the budget and that we remove the 500 and the 600 and something or 500 and something thousand dollar increase for the public schools which have a declining population but they're getting more money. I move that we remove those two things from the from this budget. I right, you have, we'll do it in two different motions. Uh, we'll take the first one. Uh, is there a second to take in the tractor out of the budget? Second. All right, there's a second. One of, the, one of the things I think the public needs to understand is the tractor that's being replaced is 25 years old. Agriculture is the number one industry in Beaufort County. The, will you be quiet? Socialism. Show a little respect. Socialism. Show a little respect. Socialism. Yeah, you're right. You are socialist. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. You're an emperor. You're, a, you're, a, the, you're the emperor. You try to be the Beaufort County emperor. But... The, the tractor is used in seed research. It's to make sure that the information that our local farmers get is the best. Because the more yield, the higher yields they got, the more economic activity they create. Okay? Anybody else want to comment on the tractor? I do. Uh, I've heard from three or four people there are already a number of groups that are doing this outside of the county. Now, we've seen the county quite often try to figure out a way to get into the private sector while not doing a very good job in the public sector. This is just yet another time we are moving into a sector where folks that are already out there doing it uh, are getting competition from public money. And I will add, we are very poor allocators of the public's wealth. We're seeing that here tonight. We've seen it all through the budget process. So if this tractor is a symbol of that, I will stand on that wall and say, you need to cut this, or you're part of the problem. OK, any other comments? OK, all those in favor of, uh, or in favor of the motion, raise your right hand. Those opposed? OK, you want to go to your next motion?
Well, uh, my second motion is that we level the school budget to the same thing that they got last year. But I think they have like a five hundred thousand dollar or something increase. We just level it back to the same thing they had last year. Adita, correct me. Is the five hundred is that not capital expenditures? I think the operating yes. expense budget could is the same. Well, they can put the money anywhere they want to. However, the school wants to divide the money. You got a five hundred thousand dollar increase in spending, and I don't think it's justified. You can't put it any place. If it's designated as capital, it's got to stay in capital. You're arguing over nets. The school can so adjust you. both of those budgets to fit the five hundred something thousand dollar reduction of increased spending. Is what I am saying. Okay, you want to second that, Stan? Uh, yes, I'll second it with a comment. Uh, uh, Commissioner Reppoltz, over the many decades I've been up here, that money's been passed back and forth many times yes. with a wink and a nod by this Board of Commissioners. It's going to be just like that a horse Wait, hitting the Just It'll be just like that horse running out of that barn with that barn door being closed, like we're just seeing with Beaufort Promise. It's just a wink and a nod. Everybody forgets we're spending more money. You're awful good at making generalities without ever giving up with specifics. So if you got a specific time that that happened, would you please present it? It happened it, 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 it happened in the last five years. It happened for about ten years running. Every year we went back and forth between those two budgets. Uh, so, and we moved money back and forth, and we moved money during the year. So if you're saying I'm lying, then you need to say that. Didn't say that. I just asked you to give us an example. Any other comments? Okay, the only comment I'll have on the school budget, I agree on the operating expense that over the last four years, the enrollment has dropped 11 percent in Beaufort County. So uh, this budget does not increase the operating expenses, but it does increase the capital. If you go to the 14 campuses that we've got, I think you would agree that $500,000 is not a big amount of money to spend on 14 different campuses. Uh, we know security is a hot issue, and we're not sure, but there's going to be an audit, supposedly, of the security at each one of these campuses, so uh, the request may be to use some of this money for enhancing security at the campus. Any other comments before we take a vote? Yeah, I'll, I'll make a comment. Uh, you want to enhance security at the campuses? Arm, arm, arm uh, Patriot teachers. Okay. All those in favor of the motion to cut the school budget by 500000 raise your right hand. Okay, make sure you see that. Cut the school budget. All right, all those in Excuse favor of keeping... Uh, Mr. Chairman, it was just last year you were looking to cut the school budget. What changed? Okay, you've already voted. Okay, all those in favor, raise your right hand. Or opposed. Opposed to the motion. Okay, we're down back to the motion to approve the budget. All those in favor of approving the budget as presented by the manager with all the changes that have been made over time in our workshop. The budget's been discussed since January. Since January, ladies and gentlemen. Since January. All those in favor of the, all those in favor of the motion, raise your right hand. Those opposed. Well, there's no changes. Just up. You know, I'm not going there, okay? <laughs> not going to stoop that. Okay, we're down to public comments. Uh, the first one, Tandy? I'll pass. You'll pass. Thank you very much. Okay, uh, Betsy? Where's Betsy? Yes. Well, I mean, it's got uh, bike greenway stay. So, and you got three minutes. No more than three minutes. Thank you. <laughs> I guess it's on, huh? You can hear me. Um, good evening, and thank you for giving me the opportunity to speak to you about the potential Washington Greenville Greenway. My name is Betsy Hester. My husband was president of Pamela Cotar River Foundation in the late 80s and 90s. He and I also began coming to Washington many years ago when the first Cycle NC Spring Ride came through here. We fell in love many times over with this community and the county. Nearly seven years ago, we made the decision to purchase a home on West Main where we now spend the majority of our time. Leanne Harsh and Interbakes Outfitters was the biggest drawing card for us in our decision to purchase our home. We fell in love with her too. 
And since we have logged many thousands of miles down here riding all over Beaufort County, the dozen, dozens of other cyclists, some from here, many transplants like us. Building the Washington Greenville Greenway is a proven economic generator, such as the highly successful Swamp Rabbit Trail in Greenville, South Carolina. Restaurants and shops have popped up all along the trail. This is a way for Beaufort County citizens to bike to Greenville without the dangers of mixing in traffic. Families with young children can use the trail without fear of traffic accidents. This bike trail is Beaufort County's opportunity to have a study conducted to see if the trail is feasible and at very little cost to the county. We may never have this opportunity again. It's included in the adopted bicycle and transportation plans for both Pitt and Beaufort counties. It's already in the plan. Here's the chance to put it into action. The trail is identified as part of the East Coast Greenway. People are already riding that Greenway, which currently includes the high-speed US 264. This is an opportunity to pursue the goals of those plans and to create an amazing cycling tra trail rivaled by none. Let's not miss this opportunity to become the destination down east for tourists and businesses alike, showing everyone that not only do we have the best river, we have the best cycling and the safest cycling. This can be one very important reason to visit and to stay. We should approve this study as it will help determine if such a project is feasible and in the words of my friend Ken Tippett, the retired cycling planner and guru for Charlotte, now retired to our wonderful town, it is feasible, it is doable, and yes, your, your yes vote shows the rest of North Carolina that Bover County has visionary leadership. And I thank you. Thank you very much. Lane? Leanne. Leanne, I'm sorry. It's all right, my whole life. <laughs> I've seen uh, you spelled different ways. Yes. Uh, my name is Leanne Harsh. I own Interbanks Outfitters, the bike and kayak shop here in town. Um, and I'm involved uh, a lot of ways uh, in this. Betsy gave you the details on it. Um, but I just would like to point out, um, obviously as a bike shop owner, you know, it would benefit my business, but that is not at all how I see this Greenway affecting us. Um, number one, of course, tourism is going to bring people in, not just moving here, but coming in for vacations and whatever, staying overnight, spending money downtown. So more taxes, more money for all these things that you guys are talking about. That's just going to bring that up. Um, it's also going to help the small businesses that are downtown, the people that are just trying to make, make it you know just like me um, but more importantly uh, I also see the cyclists like the people who live here the people that buy their bikes from me the people that buy their bikes from Walmart the people that just want to ride but they're afraid to you know we ride out on the country roads it's absolutely beautiful here I love Beaufort County for that but there's a lot of people that want to get healthy that want to do things like that for themselves and for you guys to be a part of supporting something like this shows that you you believe in you know I don't know, the health of our community. And that matters. You know, it's got to matter. Um, people getting out on bikes and being able to do it safely. Um, I know you know recently that one of our cyclists was hit by a car. And, you know, it happens. You know, if people, now people are more scared. If people have a place to go, you know, please support this. Um, I think that everybody who wants to do anything positive physically for themselves in this county and people who don't yet are going to be grateful for it. So thank you. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm. Down to legislative updates, and I did not see either one of our representatives. Uh, items for consent. Does any commissioner have an item they would like to move? For motion to approve consent motion, agenda. Second. Motion and second. All those in favor of the uh, consent, raise your right hand. Those opposed. All right, item number J is item for decision planning. Uh, Jamie, you're going to tell us about the bicycle trail. Um, actually, I'm here to talk about the Resilient Coastal Communities yeah. Program. Um, thanks, for, um, thanks for having me. Good evening, commissioners. Um, so um, the Mideast Commission and RK and K have served Beaufort County in phases one and two of the NC Resi Resilient Coastal Communities Program. We worked with the Beaufort County Community Action Team, which was comprised of public, private, and nonprofit sector members. And we also held in person, um, uh, an in-person public open house and a virtual public open house in February. Um, and uh, the uh, draft uh, Beaufort County 
resilient strategy is available on the county website on the planning page and the commissioners um, have also received a copy and um, I do have a brief PowerPoint to go over I'm not sure if it was put on the computer or if we're just going over the handout just the handout okay yeah no problem um, I think uh, the commissioner should have a copy of the handout with the slides in your packet it's on page uh, 210. I brought it on a thumb drive too, but I don't think this computer has that, if I remember correctly. We're good. Oh, it does. Okay. Actually, I can pull it up too, so everybody can see it. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So I'll have it pulled up in just a minute. Oh, so I don't have to do this. Okay. Thank you. Should I just tell you when I want it to advance, or is there? A... Okay. Okay. Great. Thank you. Okay. Um, so the um, RCCP, or Resilient Coastal Communities Program, is a component of the 2020 North Carolina Climate Risk Assessment and Resilience Plan. It was funded through the NC General Assembly and National Fish and Wildlife Foundation, and the North Carolina Division of Coastal Management is implementing the RCCP in coordination with the North Carolina Office of Recovery and Resiliency, the Nature Conservancy, and the North Carolina Sea Grant. And um, the RCCP was designed to provide technical and financial assistance to municipal and county governments to advance coastal resilient efforts throughout the 20 coastal counties in North Carolina. There was $600,000 allocated for RCCP phases one and two, which are the planning phases. 20 communities were funded with an average of 30,000 per community, and Beaufort County did receive the 30,000 in funding for phases one and two, and there was uh, no match required on those funds. Um, the RCCP is a state and local partnership designed to help overcome barriers in coastal resilience and adaptation planning by bolstering local government capacity, and it's designed to support a proactive, sustainable, and socially equitable approach to coastal resiliency planning and eventual project implementation. And the RCCP reflects the triple bottom line approach to resilience which goes beyond traditional hazard mitigation and disaster recovery to develop a holistic strategy considering social, environmental, and economic factors. The objectives were to address barriers to coastal resilience in North Carolina at the local level, such as limited capacity, economic constraints, and social inequities, to assist communities with risk and vulnerability assessments, and develop a portfolio of planned and prioritized projects, to advance coastal resilience projects to shovel-ready status and to link communities to funding streams for project implementation. Um, the phases, phase one was community engagement and risk and vulnerability assessment, and phase two was planning, project identification, and prioritization. Those two were essentially the planning phases, and those two phases are what is reflected in the draft Beaufort County Resilience Strategy that we're um, asking the board to vote on adopting tonight. And then um, one project that was um, included nature-based elements could be selected to move forward into phase three for engineering and design and phase four for project implementation. And then um, this map just shows all of the communities that were funded for phase one and two awards. And um, just for your information, also in Beaufort County, the town of Aurora, the town of Belhaven, and the city of Washington um, participated as well. And we also worked with um, RK and K to serve those communities. So the phase one and two objectives, um, again, the planning phases that are reflected in the report. Um, were to perform community-driven, qualitative and quantitative risk and vulnerability assessments with special attention to socially vulnerable populations and critical assets, and to develop a portfolio of prioritized solutions 
and projects to address risks that reduce exposure and sensitivity or increase adaptive capacity to flooding and other hazards. Those um, projects or solutions could have been policy, non-structural, structural, or hybrid. Um, we did not identify any policy-rated solutions or projects um, for, uh, we didn't make any policy or regulatory recommendations for Beaufort County um, as the community action team felt like that would um, not be the direction that the county wanted to go. And the um, North Carolina Resilient Coastal Communities Program Planning Handbook um, provided the guidance for contractors and local governments to complete phases one and two. Um, we did a stapley analysis, and this is just one page of it that kind of shows you what it, it um, looks like, but we took all of the potential projects identified by the community action team and worked with the team on this analysis, which included social, technical, administrative, political, legal, economic, and environmental considerations, and then we scored all the projects. And then the projects that scored the highest in the Stapley analysis, we um, then took to the public open houses to get public input on and came back with the community action team to narrow those down to five um, projects for the um, priority project portfolio. Um, so I'll go over those, uh, those five projects um, that ended up in the portfolio now. Um, and again, we um, really focused on education and demonstration. Um, rather than regulation, um, as far as affecting development, the team wanted to really show homeowners and developers what they could do to help with flood resilience rather than um, issue, pop, issue regulations, basically. Um, and um, thinking was kind of like m that many people would like to help with flooding resilience, but they don't really know what they can do. Um, so uh, the one priority um, project that was selected to move forward into phases three and four by the community action team was a low impact development demonstration site at Beaufort County Community College. And that project proposes to construct a low impact development demonstration site on the Beaufort County Community College campus. And this hybrid solution will be combined with the development of educational materials for developers and homeowners. And um, the uh, there was a pretty quick turnaround um, between phase one and two and uh, the phase three application being due. So that application was submitted um, on Friday and um, there's no, uh, no match required for the, for the county. Um, and then um, the drainage ditch and tributary maintenance plan um, was another um, priority project and that is to develop a maintenance plan to clean out drainage ditches and tributaries to decrease flooding by improving flow. And that plan would focus on areas located outside of existing drainage districts. Unless those existing districts were found to need some improvements, it could be included. But um, from what we understood, the um, existing drainage districts were pretty well covered already. Um, and the essential emergency services operations redundancies was another priority project to create redundancy for government employees located within high-risk infrastructure and emergency service buildings to decrease the potential for lack of services directly after severe weather events. This would include establishing backup office space and equipment at other facilities in order to return to operational status as quickly as possible. And then um, the next project is Living Shoreline Demonstration Site at Wrights Creek Park and Living Shoreline Planning and Funding Program. This project proposes to install a Living Shoreline Demonstration Site on the county-owned Wrights Creek Park site. This nature-based solution will be combined with a Living Shoreline's Planning and Funding Program in coordination with the Coastal Federation and other nonprofits to determine funding availability for Living Shorelines. And uh, living shorelines are a relatively new approach that incorporates natural elements to create a more effective buffer to absorb wave energy and protect, protect against shoreline erosion. And uh, the board recently approved for um, permittees to submit a, a Division of Coastal Management Public Beach and Coastal Waterfront Access Grant pre-application and that living shoreline demonstration site along with other improvements for that park site was included in that application that was submitted in April. And then the final project in the um, priority project portfolio was the Open Space Greenway and Public Park Improvement Program to develop a program to identify and establish open space areas within the floodplain and floodway. 
as well as needed improvements on greenways and in public parks. This program should also identify and maintain all property acquired with public mitigation funds within the special flood hazard area as undisturbed open space in perpetuity. And this program will help the county stay proactive against uh, flooding. And um, we, we will um, continue to search for uh, grant funds to help the county implement the priority projects. So that was really some uh, big part of the program was wanting to link the community um, to funding so you're not having to um, come out of pocket with that. And um, again, the draft Beaufort County Resilience Strategy is available on the um, county website, on the planning page in the lower right-hand corner. And I'll be glad to answer any questions the board. Yeah. Any commissioner have a question for Jamie? Does the bike trail have anything or could it have anything to do with this, what you're doing? Um, with the open space and greenway plan, um, I'm sure that would be something that would be looked at. This program um, more looked at resilience to flooding, and that was recommended as a project in the sense that the open space it helps um, is an area that would um, retain flood waters, and just having more open space is improving the resilience to flooding. Sorry, I confused you because I think I'm the one that yeah. made that comment. I'll entertain a motion to approve the uh, draft. Uh, okay, motion to approve. S and a second. Any discussion? Well, well I have one piece of discussion. I'm not going to vote for this, mainly because we're already doing these things, and I think some of these ideas about flooding in, in the coastal plain are just backwards to what the reality is. Any other discussion? All those in favor of the motion, raise your right hand. Those opposed? Thank you. Thank you, Chair. All right, we're down to uh, item K. Uh, Jamie. Jamie. Item number K is the items for decision, human resources, Dolores. You're going to talk to us about the badge machine printer maintenance and software. Yes, sir. Good afternoon again, commissioners. Um, Human Resources currently prepares badges for Beaufort County, including all county employees, regular and proxy badges, courthouse badges, security personnel at the courthouse, judges' chambers, and etc. Our current badge equipment is over five years old, with the typical lifespan of the equipment being about four years. The equipment that we have now has been discontinued as of July 2021, and the software is no longer supported. The equipment that we have now is currently not functioning very well at all. After consulting with Badge Pass, um, they have provided us two options available to procure a new badge machine and printer and supported software and maintenance. Please see below the two options uh, and their cost. And you can see in your um, agenda booklet that the equipment purchase um, is $9,042. Um, and this, all of this is combined for the purchase. The software agreement, $570 uh, yearly, and this would be a reoccurring expense. The subscription, $215. And then the service agreement for the card printer would be $1,250, and that also would be a recurring expense for a total of $10,000. $862 uh, to purchase for the first year. If you would look over the uh, lease rental subscription amount, there's a one-time $300 uh, setup fee. The base monthly subscription would be $40, and then to expand on that with the elite monthly subscription would be $175. So the monthly total for the subscription would be $215 a month, and the total for the year would be $2,580. And for that lease rental subscription, that would be a three-year contract. 
It is much more economical for the county if we choose the lease rental subscription option. Badge Pass will provide everything for a three-year period and the county would only need to purchase the um, badge material. The county manager, finance director, and purchasing officer have all reviewed the quotes and are also in agreement with the leased rental subscription. And I think you have a copy of those contracts in your booklet. Are there any questions? Anyone have a question of uh, Dolores? John? The uh, elite subscription includes mobile print and go print. Do you, uh, do you see you're going to be running around the county and printing out badges? Um, not, not usually. I mean, that could happen. And it also includes, I believe, a, an extra number of badges, an unlimited number. I was just wondering mm -hmm. what it would be if you took that out. The mobile stuff. We can we can check with him and get that. Well, it's okay. Get that information for you. I'm not I'm not going to hold up for that. Okay, a motion to approve the uh, lease is recommended. Second. And we have a second. Any other discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Thank you. And we'd also uh, recommend approval to place the old badge patch um, equipment in, into the county surplus. Okay. Thank you. All right. Uh, Lloyd? <laughs> I didn't have a run this time. So we've got two things in front of you. One's kind of a two-parter, I guess. So the first one that we actually have is the revaluation contract. Along with the revaluation contract, I believe, is the um, project fund. Um, should be in front of you the ordinance to establish a project fund, general fund revaluation, project fund, etc., to move the money over to be able to use the money to pay the contract along with the other items. This is going to be again, which we've already discussed, and you've already voted on. It actually is a little, the company actually worked out a deal with me. It's actually a little more affordable, actually, than we thought it was going to be, but you all had already heard this one time before. But this is to officially, you know, fund the revaluation and to commit to this company to go forward. Did, did we already talk about which company? Yes, sir. That was already voted on. We already reached out. That's what I meant. Yes, sir. And after we did that, actually, we actually had a number. We actually managed to, to lower that number a little bit through some different changes in the project. But, but this is the, the same company that was brought for you and voted for. Yes, sir. Did we have the dollar amounts at that time? Yes, it was more than it actually is now. I believe that it was, I know it per parcel, but I'd have to look at the amount. It was It was about 40, it was whatever the number of parcels in the county times a dollar. So it was 40-something thousand more than what it is now. Yeah. 47,000. Yes, sir, but roughly. I, you know how it is. It actually changes as we add or subtract. But. Do we need two motions, one on the contract and one on, we do both of them? Henry, uh, hear, hear uh, or entertain a motion to approve the uh, revaluation contract and also the to include the uh, budget or the general fund uh, project fund. Motion to approve. Is there a second? All right, we have a motion and a second. Any any questions? Discussion? All right. All those in favor, raise your right hand. All right. Or do you want to you want to go into the lease uh, agreement? Absolutely. I'm looking at Ms. Radcliffe. I believe that is it for that one. Is that not? That's fine. Thank you. So with the lease agreement, um, as is per usual, in the county, whenever we provide office space, unfortunately we do not, or I do not, have office space for a full team for revaluation. In the past, we've rented different spaces here within the county. This is nothing different than that. This is a lease agreement with Pamlico Properties to do a 
might be a pretty good deal with uh, some office space for a long-term lease because contrary to some belief, revals are not instantaneous. They take a couple years to do. You have to visit all the properties, should visit all the properties. So this is going to be for their office space, for the use of that office space, and probably for some other revalue-related stuff. Again, this is probably coming for you all in past years. This is a normal thing, I would think. And this is the uh, um, pretty good deal, in my opinion. Okay, this is the uh, contract to lease the property at uh, 222 Stewart Parkway Suite 202. And this is for a three-year period. So that's within just a rock throw from my office. It's that area uh, right across the road, really, across from where the family dollar, I guess, was for the old one. that's now been whatever else. So it's right in there. It's for a three-year period, which is going to be through the appeals, ending at about the time the, the appeals end for the revaluation. Mr. Chairman, yes, I think you're reading the address of the. I, I think so too. Uh, I'm yeah. sorry, that's why I was kind of. The actual property is 105 East Third Street. There we go. I apologize. I highlighted that. All right, we're good. Okay. Really close to my office. East Third Street. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Is there parking available? Is there enough parking available? So the parking, to my understanding, is in the lot that is actually, it's some of it out there in the lot where the old family dollar, it's, it's partitioned off. You can kind of see it where it actually is in there as far as that goes. Plus, we have some parking across the road, of course, in the county lot. John? It appears that we're going to have to relook at what we, we reserve for this, right? Because as soon as I can calculate, we're a quarter of a million dollars over what we reserved. I did not understand that to be so, but I am looking at Mr. Radcliffe. I thought it was only, it was in the tens, but I did not think it was nearly that much over well, what we Take it out in the, in the adjustment 218000 for the contract, and then you've got on the lease agreement another 30000 So I was looking ahead to my agenda item, so I'm sorry. What was your question, Commissioner? Are we, uh, my, the question is, do we have to recalculate what we reserve for this in the future because it looks to me like we're a quarter of a million dollars short. Yeah. Yes, um, so since we already had the 22-23 budget done with the $162,050 contribution, right. um, we'll have to come back and amend that next year sometime to increase that by a little bit. Any, any other questions? But, but to, to that point, I, I got to say this. To that point, though, I, I believe the budget was roughly in the tune of one th one million three or something like that for the overall. And this number adds up just to be somewhat slightly over that. Correct? Okay, I'm referring to the one eight contribution that's required for the one after we do the twenty twenty five. So, yes. whatever that takes us to twenty thirty three, is that what you're referring to, right. Commissioner? Yes. I'm sorry. Right. Yes. So the, the current contribution of 162.50 that we're doing annually is not sufficient. That does not get us 1.3 million dollars over eight years. So you're right. We'll have to increase that by a small amount. But the amount we have on hand currently will be enough to do the 2025 revaluation. Okay. Okay. I'll entertain a motion to approve the lease of the property at 105 East 3rd Street. I got it right. That's correct. All right. Need a motion? So I'll motion to approve. Okay, I'll second. Any discussion? All those in favor of approving the uh, three-year lease, raise your right hand. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Lloyd. We're going to take uh, our break, and we'll be back in a few minutes. As requested during the uh, expansion request meeting the other night, we have come back with just a, a short update on um, the mega site planning that is in process. Uh, Christina and I have met with uh, Garrett and Moore, uh, you, you met Vance Moore, um, roughly every other week since we began phase one of the mega site planning in early April. Um, they, we have presented them data since we first met with them, I don't know, maybe a year ago, I'm not sure of the timeline, for them to do their planning process. And they have used that data to determine preliminary capacities for materials at the new sites. Again, one on the north side, one on the south side. Um, they have 
Vance and his team came and met with Christina and myself. They presented several design concepts that they had worked up uh, before, really input from us. Um, pretty extensive designs, probably larger than what we need here in Beaufort County, uh, but definitely some ideas that uh, could translate to something in a smaller setting. Um, we reviewed those with them that day, shared pros and cons, likes and dislikes of the different designs, and uh, sent them back with those comments. They have uh, since developed additional conceptual site designs, um, and in recent meetings in the past two to three weeks, uh, we have focused in on one or two that we really think would work well, and uh, they are continuing to tweak those designs. Um, some of the considerations we've really taken into account working through these is first and foremost safety um, of citizens, of site attendants, truck drivers, anybody who can possibly be on that site, safety is our top priority. Uh, traffic flow, we're working to meet the needs of our current program while also having thoughts of future growth and how can these sites improve what we are currently doing. Um, trying to make sure we're taking all of that into account as we're moving forward with this process. Um, outside of our work with uh, Garrett and Moore, Christina and myself have uh, visited three sites in Wake County um, to see some of the elements actually in operation of the designs that uh, Garrett Moore has presented. Uh, we've viewed some of the safety items. We've looked at the traffic flow. Vance has talked a lot about pre-crushers. We actually got to see some of the pre-crushers in action, and we're very impressed by those. They were, uh, wasn't too sure about them at first, but now I'm kind of leaning that way. Um, let's look to see how they do their tire recycling process, how they handle special waste such as TVs, computers, um, tires also fits into that category, as well as hazardous, household hazardous waste. You know, your uh, gasoline left over, your pesticides, um, other chemicals like that, um, how they handle that. We also stopped by two sites in Wilson County coming back to that, um, one very similar to what we currently have at many of our sites, as well as one that was kind of um, a little updated, but um, not, not really today's designs like you're seeing a lot of places, I guess would be a good way to put it. So after that, you know, we shared some of our our findings at those sites and talked about them in, in terms of what they had presented to us. And as when we left them with the last meeting, they are finalizing a, a design concept or two for us. Uh, but they are also beginning the process of searching for property for the sites. Um, based on these conceptual designs, they've been able to come up with an estimated acreage of what we could expect to need for the two sites. Um, we've given them just some general suggestions on where we think location would be a good fit. Um, we've talked about a access requirements. We really don't want people turning on and off of a major highway to get these sites. So we're thinking somewhere close to a major highway, but on a side road. Um, we don't want, don't want to have those traffic concerns there. As well as the, you know, just the overall thoughts. Excuse me, uh, yes, sir. when you're talking about a major highway, are you talking about Something like a 33, or, or is that major? Uh, we're thinking 33, 264, something like that. You know, you don't really want some. So 33 would be major too. Yes, uh, so a lot of traffic. Thinking more of a county road, if at all possible. Well, secondary road, state maintained, um, state, close close to the major thoroughfares, but we don't. Our desire is to not have people turning on and off of a, a you know, a U.S. or a major NC highway. There's just too much traffic, people with trailers and trash, and uh, you do, yeah, a lot of concerns there. Now, right? Let's let's not yeah. say that you know push comes to shove, that may be our only option. But we're trying to stay away from that. Um, we just have that concern that major accidents could occur with people pulling out of these sites specifically. Um, but also, widening would occur, turn lanes, so that would help with that aspect, but still wouldn't eliminate it. Um, but back to what I was talking about, uh, also in their search for sites, they're taking into account the standard things that you would look for with any kind of solid waste fight. You know, you're avoiding wetlands, you're avoiding streams, you don't want to be too close to our water sources, things like that. Um, so they're, they're taking all of that information and proceeding with their uh, task two 
of their phase one property acquisition or property search, I can't remember the exact term, um, but proceeding with that. Um, our plan is to have Garrett and Moore, whether it's Vance or him and his team, I'm not sure, be here in July and provide a more comprehensive update with the planning process. Hopefully they'll be able to present you know, what we're looking at with some site plan designs. Um, we'll just have to see where things are in the process there. And I'll be happy to answer any other questions. Randy? In my world, um, I, in the calls that I've had about trash is, is involving construction debris. In the places that you visited, were they handling construction debris at any of them? Yes. Um, all of the Wake County sites had construction debris at each of the locations. I do not know their restrictions on you know, quantities that you can bring in. Um, I do know that they did have restrictions on your vehicle. You couldn't bring, don't quote me here, but I don't think you could bring a trailer. I don't think you could bring a box truck or anything like that without making a free reservation through an online site. You're welcome to bring that, but you have to you have to make a reservation to come and bring that type of vehicle. Um, but as far as C and D, I don't I don't recall any. You know, you can only have one truck load, things like that. I don't recall what they were, but they did take them at each site. They had the open top containers. Um, they were up against the retaining wall. You had to go and dump your waste in the top um, and keep it. And one thing just to note, all these sites had walls that were, you know, here. It's a safety thing to keep people out of the bins. Um, you have to take your waste and dump in the top of them. And that, that's what we're looking at. Um, we're, like I said, safety is our utmost priority. Um, I, have, I have a concern that we're going to spend all this money and, and the people that I'm aware of will have construction debris and they'll say, all this money spent and we can't, still can't throw a two before out there. So um, I, I would like to see just a small component, even if it's like f room for expansion one day, you know, this will be the seat so we can at least say that uh, because I'm understanding that that is a very expensive uh, endeavor, the construction part of it. And I think Vance has some ideas on that that I've asked, quizzed him about. But, you know, in, in talking, if you could just set aside a little area for that and, and one day maybe expand uh, that to where we actually are dealing with two befores right. and such. That, you know, that's certainly a thought that we've had, um, either making sure that we do have a spot for it already, like Wake County already has, or, and this was one thing that I pointed out in our last design meetings, we have the way it's set up, you have room to expand a year or two down the road or however long down the road, you can add to it. You're not hemmed in by, you know, this this roadway got put here so we can't expand. You know, I know you can change that, but it's more expensive to change it down the road versus, you know, leave it, leave some room and you can make it in the future. Um, we, 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 we have, we've talked some about C and D. Vance has shared some of his ideas with us. We're continuing to, you know, see what's out there other places are doing, see how we can best offer that service. We have the problem of making sure that we manage the quantities that come in, that we aren't, aren't taking contractor materials, that if, if um, John Doe does want to get rid of two two-by-fours, let's come up with a way that we can make that work, but keeping the, the people that don't need to be using that service out. Prepare an answer because I'll be asking. Okay. Yes. Along, along that line, I, I would like for you to, and I think the best way to do it is in a, a, a work session, to bring some of these preliminary plans and let's look at them. I don't want to be presented with a final plan saying this is it, this is what we've decided. I want to be involved in the, in the process. So I would like to set up the rest of the board be willing, and if they won't do it, I'll meet with you by myself. Uh, and look at your 
pr preliminary plans and have some of the discussions that we need to be having about the particulars of this this stuff. So I mean, I, I don't know how the rest of the board feels about that. Well, I, I think that's a good idea. And it sounds like that you're probably getting close. Yes, we we feel that we're we're close to you know having what we feel is a a good option. Or, or two. Um, a lot of it has to do with traffic flow. The options we've looked at kind of have the same setup as far as, you know, how are the bins placed and things like that. But a lot of it has to do with, you know, how do you route the traffic? Where do you put the yard waste area so it's, you know, it's, it's safe for individuals to be in and out of there without being too intertwined with truck traffic and things like that. Well, I'm also concerned, aside from the things you're concerned about, which are the, the macro things, I'm concerned about some of the micro things. For instance, we have people that may want to be a true environmentalists and go the full route, and I don't think it would be that much more expensive to start off that we have a place uh, just thinking out loud, and this is why we need a work session uh, where you could put your plastic separate. If you want to separate your plastic, we're going to accommodate you because uh, we're going to have a big enough site. You can put your glass over here. You can do this. You can do that. You've already gotten into some of that, but I want us to be able to talk about it from a practical standpoint uh, and, and have some have some meaningful discussions. Right. Mr. Chairman, are you thinking about a committee or so? No, 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 no. no. We've tried we've tried that and we failed. So, uh, can we can we can we pick a can we pick a night in July where we can do that or? How close is he to getting you find the problem? Like I said, our our initial plan right now would be for Vance or his team or whoever to be here for the. Um, July board meeting, but we can certainly set up a certain. Okay. Now I don't know time-wise what we can arrange in June. We can certainly uh, well, ask Mr. Ask Moore him, about that. Why don't you ask him what certainly. dates he may be available at the end towards the end of June do that. to meet with us? Why don't Why don't we pick a couple of options? The week of the 27th. That's the last week. Uh, Monday, Tuesday, Thursday. I mean. Anybody got a problem with the 27th or the 28th? No, not yet. Okay. Chairman, just as a reminder, on the 28th, you have the Finance Committee meeting. This would be at night. Oh, okay. I'm, I think it would be better at night, wouldn't it? Sorry, it would be at night. Is there something with your um, why, don't you, why don't you try those two dates, well, Monday and Tuesday? About it. And I can, I'll communicate that back. Okay. And then Katie can get it out there and put it on the calendar. Any other questions of Wes? Thank you very much, Wes. Right. Thank you all. Have a good evening. All right. Next item is from the uh, Sheriff's Office, the approval of the NCDPS grant purchases. Chief? Mr. Chairman, Commissioners, um, I believe it's 260 through 276 in your books. There was a, um, through the state budget, there was a pass-through grant of funds to the counties that, I can't remember the number, but pretty much hit the smaller 50 counties in the state. That uh, Then they split that pot up of money. Uh, amongst those counties to get it to the point where right at $85,000 was granted through the state um, with um, the limitations that the funds needed to be used for law enforcement purposes by the sheriff's office and that the funds needed to supplement the budget not to replace already appropriated funds. So there was a couple of meetings that we talked about some of the options that we were looking at um, and uh, before you, you have purchase orders and the, rec and the requisition requests for the drone that we spoke of, um, uh, UTV or side-by-side -side that would give us the ability to go into the dismal or some of the other um, unincorporated, uh, undeveloped areas if we needed to do a search and rescue, if we needed to do a, uh, any uh, interdiction work uh, for or any other purposes that we couldn't get any of our vehicles which are which happens a good number of times during the year right now if we have a time that we would 
need equipment like that, it's usually guys that we have work and go home and get theirs uh, for us to do that. So that would be something that uh, we would we would be better equipped to handle uh, some of those operations and then the trailer uh, for that equipment to go into so we can pretty much be plug and play and ready to go at a moment's notice to get where we need to. Um, and uh, just to maybe get rid of a question, we do have trucks available to pull the trailers, the trailer that we need to uh, for any of those things. Uh, you've got the information in front of you. We've gone through the process of the uh, bid and the proposals and uh, with the purchasing agent that we've got and upon approval we should be good to go to make these purchases. Um, we'll answer any questions that any commissioners have. Dan? Uh, I, I, you got the grant, you can do, I mean, you can tell us what you want to do with it. The question I have, have any of your people had training for uh, use of drones? We have. Okay. Um, we, and, and I guess as part of the things where I was actually surprised, and I don't get surprised a lot, um, but as we were working through the process of looking for the drone that we wanted, uh, we did some training with Nutrien and some of the fire departments, and the, the drone that we're looking for is actually pretty much the identical unit that Pine Town Fire Department, Aurora Fire Department, and Nutrien has several of those. Okay. So we, we can actually cross-train with those agencies, and if we have a large operation, then we're all actually using the same equipment. We'll just have more or some different components that go along with the drone that if we're looking for a specific person, we can do that where they probably can't. Um, a spotlight would be on it that maybe the others can, the infrared, things like that that we can use in search and rescue and, and, and others. And, but. and my last part to that is you said some of your men, when you have these incidents, some of your men have to go home and get their off-the-road vehicles. Yeah, for the How often does that happen? I wouldn't say it's often, but, um, you know, there, there may be you know, three or four to a half dozen on a hot year and one to two on... You need it, you need it. That's right. Okay. Thank you. What's the range of this drone? Now that I don't know, um, but that was probably one of the biggest things that Investigator Fowler hit me with was that we needed a lot of batteries. So, and batteries are pretty expensive, so I think that with the unit itself it'll come with two, and I think that, that in the proposal was an additional six. And my question to him was with the other agencies that have them, are they the same batteries? And he said yes. So, um, so yeah, as long as we have batteries, you bring it down, you put a battery in, you send it back up. If you can recharge that battery, well, if you've got enough batteries, you can keep recycling the recharge. That, that is my understanding, yes, sir. You need to recharge. You're gonna, you are going to recharge it. Yeah, every, and that, that was, in, in my talkings with the investigators that were looking at the specs, I, I told him without a doubt, since I know probably the least about the equipment than anybody involved in our in my, our conversations, I told him this needs to be a one swing. I said, if you need it, put it down, talk to the vendor, let's ask for it, let's make this as turnkey as possible, because I don't want to get it where we get it, then three months later, I have to come back before this board and tell you that I didn't do it right or I needed more. So if, if that is the case, I'll probably send them and I won't come. Wouldn't it be nice to get the, the drone with the reval people, then we can save some money on the eagle, whatever. <laughs> other other questions? If not, I'll entertain a motion. This would be cheaper than the three years. Yeah. Okay, I'll entertain a motion. Okay, second? Second. All right, motion and second. Any further discussion? If not, all those in favor, raise your right hand. Thank you. Chief. You're welcome. Okay, uh, Finance, Anita, you're up. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Just want to give you a really quick update on the sales tax number. Our March collections just came out last week, and you've got a handout, legal sheet of paper with the line bar graph. So our March collections still continue to be really high, uh, $1,170,529. That's up 8.7% from the same month last year. 
and up almost $200,000 from just the previous month, last month. So um, as far as from a budgetary standpoint, that little box to the far right-hand top there, we are currently budgeted in fiscal year 21-22, uh, $10.725 million for sales tax. We're trending at a collection of 12.372, so we're looking at right now a $1.6 million surplus in sales tax. Any questions? Thank you, Anita. Uh, Brian? Town of Bill Haven and Inspection Services. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Members of the board, I turn your attention to page 278. This is a request from the Town of Bell Haven for the county to assume inspection services for them again. As you recall, we did that in the past. Um, they currently have a part-time inspector who's planning to step down due to some prior commitments. Um, you have a letter from the town manager, Lynn Davis, asking that the county assume those responsibilities. We would do it as we did before, where we would charge our fee manual for those services and we would use that to recover our cost. I've had a conversation with the chief building inspector and he sees no issues with that due to their workload. So we would recommend your approval. Motion to approve. We've got a motion to approve. Second. And a second. Any, any, yes. Just, just, is, is this a permanent thing or is it just a, a temporary like we did before? My assumption is it's going to be temporary. Uh, I think they're going to go back and start looking again. Okay. This was just a, uh, they have a part-time person in place and they're stepping out. It's, it's always both in. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All those in favor of the motion, raise your right hand. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, we're down to the Beaufort Hyde Martin Regional Library 10-year agreement. Brian. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Page 280. Um, you'll see that the uh, BHM Library has requested that the board recommit to, the, to an agreement with them for 10 years. That is a request that they say is required by the state library system. Um, you have in front of you the proposed new agreement. Um, the current agreement that you have in place is very similar to this one. I'm not sure there are, many, there are any changes at all. Uh, but the current agreement goes through June 30th of 23. This agreement would begin July 1 of 23 and run through June 30th of 33. I know that there's, um, I know there's been some comments or discussion by the board about library services. Um, if I'll also turn your attention to page 285. Um, section 7 withdrawal provisions for withdrawal and this is the same as the prior agreement it reads that uh, um, under a, um, item A a, per, a member proposing withdrawal from the library system shall give written notice on or before July 1 to the regional board uh, and other uh, units of the government and state library system and withdrawal will be effective June 30th uh, B reads that if you decide within that time frame you want to rescind that proposal, then you still remain a part of it under the same conditions. So I um, want to give you that information, take the board's direction on this. Again, I know there have been some comments by board members about looking at the agreement and looking at the system. Um, so I'll, I'll answer any questions you may have. Um, I think you have some time in looking at this. Um, but if you want to make some sort of move, regarding participation you need to study that and, and it would need to I mean, it, you, you could do it any year within the 10 years there's nothing that locks you into it but you have to give a year's notice yeah i, I think i've made some comments about that and i read this contract this agreement pretty closely i think we're protected and have a lot of flexibility to do whatever we want to even if we decided to do something it would take us at least a year to do it so so there's i don't have a bit of problem with contract myself Uh, John, do we have any idea what their long-term vision is and where they want to go? Mm -hmm. uh, I think they a, f a few years ago they uh, they did a strategic planning session. Okay, uh, and they have a strategic plan. I can certainly provide that to you, um, and we can certainly have them come in and, and make a presentation to you. Okay, I think generally their goal is to survive. Yeah, I mean, it's it's a, it's difficult for the the agency, the, the government entities that are involved in this, it's expensive, and and I mean I think they're they're trying to make sure that they're that they're that they survive and, and keep the service provided to rural areas that may not have the ability to do it without partnering with other entities. I mean they just like Hyde County, they probably just couldn't do it if they had to do it on their own. Maybe yeah. Martin, you know. So I, I think there may have been special legislation on this. It's been. Ten years or so since I was involved in it, 
Yeah, well, before even before Bob came, uh, because his wife worked there. But uh, there's some kind of a deal that the state funds this a certain way based upon the counties and the various entities funded a certain way. It's sort of a unique thing that's not that's not, if you will, what you think is a straight common sense type thing. But the contract covers, you know, gives us all the provisions and protection that, that we need. And, and the problem is if we pulled out of it, these people would have to decide what they wanted to do because we're sort of the biggest biggest nut on that wheel. And uh, but, it, but at any rate, I'm satisfied. You want to make a motion? I, I, I move that we accept the contract as presented. Is there a second? A second. All right. Any further discussion? All right. I'll just, I'll just say this. And, and for those who do not know, uh, uh, this you have ranches, Bath, Bellhaven, here in Washington, and Aurora, and Aurora, and Aurora. And those, uh, those branches are popular with a lot of folk. And I'm your representative on that board. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> So what is your long-term plan, Representative? Well, I, 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 so I, don't, I think the said it too bad. I mean, my my experience, if I go in one, most of the time all the computers are busy. There's someone there at a computer. Um, so I I would say that's probably, I don't know whether that's their number one goal or not, John, but it provides a service to... To some people that maybe don't have the internet connection or have even have a computer, uh, I, I tell you what I what I will do. I will I will make sure the uh, the director and the uh, president of the board would come and answer any questions you may have. Okay, did we vote? Yeah. yeah. Did we? All right. No, we didn't vote. We didn't vote. Okay. All right. All those in favor, raise your right hand. All right, we're down to uh, item number three under yours, Brian, the uh, Mideast fiscal year 2023 SPR funding request for the Greenway Feasibility Study. Yes, Mr. Chairman, draw your attention to page 289. Um, as you are aware, we are the county, along with uh, several other counties, are a member of the Mideast RPO, the Regional Planning Organization. And the RPO is submitting uh, a 2023 SPR funding request for a Washington Greenville Greenway Feasibility Study. This is through the RPO. They're the ones who would receive that. It's a $140,000 project. It's funded by NCDOT at 95%. The reason it's funded at 95% is because in the Mideast Commission area, there is at least one county that is a Tier 1 county. So because of that, it allows us to have a 95% match from DOT and only a 5% local match. So if awarded, and again, that's if this is awarded, they're applying for this. We've sent them letters of support saying we would, we would support it. $7,000 would be the 5% local match, and that would be split between Beaufort County, the City of Washington, Pitt County, and the City of Greenville. So it would be $1,750 each. I don't need money for it. There's, there's money in the budget to do it. So what I'm asking you to do is allow Beaufort County to serve as the lead agency uh, under this grant if it is awarded because it is a reimbursable grant. So if, if it is awarded and you approve us moving forward, then we would act as the lead agency. We would manage the grant. We would have a budget ordinance, a project ordinance that would, that would show the $140,000. We would expend those funds. We would then seek reimbursement from the, the state DOT. Uh, and you see the application put together. It's a really, um, really great concept to be able to uh, move from here back to Greenville along our Greenway situation. And this would be the plan that would tell us if it was feasible, what the cost would be associated with it, and how you could get it done. Um, always with DOT, you got to have a plan in place before they start to look at any kind of additional funding for you. So we would make we'd make the recommendation that you approve this. Motion to approve. Got a motion and second. Second. Discussion. All those in favor of the motion, raise your right hand. Thank you. <laughs> okay, item number four is the uh, Wilkinson Community Event Center Grant Match. Brian? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Draw your attention to page 304. Uh, and as you may recall, at a regular meeting on December the 7th, 2020, the Board of Commissioners approved uh, providing a $10,000 
match uh, for a USDA Rural Development Grant uh, for the Wilkerson Community Event Center. Um, the Rural Center, uh, USDA Rural Development Grant did not progress, but we've gotten information from the group that the Cannon Foundation has expressed some interest uh, in assisting with a grant to replace the roof of the facility. Um, there is still a local mass that's needed, um, and it is requested that the previously approved $10,000 match and be applied to the Cannon Foundation grant instead of the original one. Um, we wanted to bring this back to you because it is a, although you, al although you allocated those funds, they were for a different purpose. Um, so we wanted to bring this back to you for your consideration. It's essentially for the same thing, but it's a different entity that would be funding that. So. Motion to approve. Got a motion to approve. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, items for decision. Uh, Kitty, you got the first one on the uh, College Board of Trustee appointment. Yes, sir. With um, Reverend Caton's passing, there is a position open on the Over County Community College Board of Trustees. We've had one person apply for that, which you should have that application in your um, books. And um, we're looking for recommendations from your board or an appointment. Motion. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Any any questions? Okay, all those in favor of the appointment of uh, Laura Stanton, raise your right hand. Okay. All right, the next one, uh, Hood, is your request for enforcement of the noise ordinance. Well, I've, I've, had, I've had several complaints over the last month, and actually I'm a complainant myself about the enforcement of the noise ordinance. It seems to me, for one thing, there are an awful lot of vehicles that are very noisy, and I don't understand why I have to be disturbed because some 18-year-old wants to hear his muffler. Uh, I think that we need to be asking the sheriff and we need to contact the Highway Patrol and ask them for some more enforcement on this thing, particularly on traffic. As uh, uh, far as other complaints about the noise ordinance, I really haven't had them. All the complaints that I've had involve vehicles. Are they running to your subdivision? No, they're running by my office downtown. Okay. I've had, I've had two calls in the last week as it related to potential problems with noise. Yeah. With some intention plans. I don't have a problem with what you're but, but but if it's ready by your office, that's a city. Uh, I understand it is a city, but you notice I mentioned the Highway Patrol too and the sheriff. We need we need all of the agencies to uh, to. Take, put, take a look at this and I ask the manager as a part of this if you contact Highway Patrol and tell them that commissioners are having complaints about noisy vehicles. And I've talked to the sheriff. He says he hasn't had a lot of complaints. But, you know, Charlie, one of the complaints I had was that they complained to the sheriff and the sheriff wouldn't do anything. So I don't know. But we, but there are a lot of noisy vehicles out there uh, uh, disturbing the peace and they're, they're just too noisy and I don't think enough's being done about it. And it'll only get worse unless we do something because every 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 person that's out there that's immature enough to want to do this, there's another person that is more immature and he's going to try to best that one. So the thing's only going to keep going until somebody puts a hammer on it and gets it stopped. You want to move into your illegal drugs? Well, do we by consensus, are we going to contact the Highway Patrol and the various agencies that we've had a complaint? Well, I thought you you've not you've contacted the sheriff, but not. No, I, I'm asking for the manager to contact these agencies on behalf of the commissioners, which has a lot more clout than me calling. Mr. Chairman, I would like to reach out and find out what can or can't be done related to this particular vehicle. Big noise. Okay. I. Uh, the uh, next thing is uh, illegal drugs. Illegal drugs. I put this up as a discussion item, and I really would like for, for this board to have a committee, if at all possible, to start lobbying people in Raleigh about tougher laws on drugs because I'm encountering uh, drugs and people who have been abused by drugs more and more and more and more, and I think we're just eat up with this stuff and nobody's really doing anything about it. And of course, you can say, oh, good, he's out there, he's just trying to be tough. What I would like the lobby of the legislature to do 
is to toughen the laws so that there's no getting out early for good behavior if you're convicted. I would like to target uh, the selling of drugs. The person who is accepting money or benefit for, for exchanging drugs. Uh, I know that everybody's got a soft heart for the poor people that have been dumb enough to take the drugs Turn the mic on. Do what? Turn the mic on. Yeah, I know everybody has a soft heart for the person that's been dumb enough to use drugs and get addicted to them, and you can slip into that pretty easy. I do understand that. Having been a smoker myself, that's a drug. Nicotine is a drug, and it is a habit-forming drug. But we need to do more to put a stop to what is going on in society. Too many people's lives are ruined. Too many people can't get a job. There are too many children out there. One-third of law enforcement, one-third of the jail, one-third of social services is there because of illegal drugs. And yet we sit around and say, oh, isn't that awful? Nobody does anything. Well, going back to what I'm talking about, I would like to see the law toughened. I'd like to get off of this business about one drug is worse than another drug. Uh, we'll have one sentence if it's on the list and you get convicted from marijuana up. And I will say this as a part of this. There's been a tremendous effort put forth to say that marijuana doesn't harm you. That is not what the literature says that, about the use of marijuana. There's no such thing as, as medical marijuana. That is a big farce that is put on the public. There is a substitute drug for everything that medical marijuana will do for you. And if nothing else, you can get the oils and the extracts from the marijuana. Uh, in order by prescription in order to accomplish what needs to be accomplished so for those that believe in it that's fine but I don't I think it will be a big mistake for the legislature to pass any law legalizing marijuana use in North Carolina to that end and as a part of this discussion before we finish here I would like for us to do a resolution to the legislature asking that they not legalize uh, uh, marijuana in any form in the state of North Carolina well, so is that, is that a separate from from your other re, uh, uh, yeah, uh, do, directive? That would be a separate resolution. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I just put my stuff on the table. I want to. I want to hear I, from you guys. Well, you know, I, I agree with not legalizing marijuana under any circumstances. However, medical marijuana does give some people relief. But the problem with a lot of it, and I think we can make this argument is that medical marijuana sometimes is uh, uh, transitioned into uh, recreational marijuana mm -hmm. for a lot of folks. And marijuana now is about three or four times more powerful than back in the day when I was coming up through high school and college. So it, it is a drug. It is an, I, I recognize it as a narcotic then. It's, it really is one now. Uh, in reference to your other directive, speaking of drugs, I, I do think fentanyl, is something we need to be very cognizant about. There's a lot of deaths involved. There's a uh, there's a great propensity of fentanyl coming across the border, and uh, we need to worry about killing two birds with one stone with that one. I, I think I think there are people in other countries that know this is a great way to destroy America piece by piece, and that is through uh, fentanyl being utilized by so many people who normally would not use it. We heard the uh, district attorney just uh, 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 two meetings ago discuss fentanyl being the new heroin. In fact, he said there are few heroin busts. Most of them are fentanyl busts posing as heroin. So uh, we need to be very cognizant of fentanyl if in your first directive. I don't have a problem with what you're talking about here, but are you including the illegal use of pills too? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yes. Well, you, you you made a motion. I, 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 you want to? Okay. I, I mean, and you hit it right on the head. They're they're pushing it hard in in, this, in the legislature right now about medical marijuana, and some of the biggest supporters of that is I think some of those guys that has been hurt in the war, something like that. It eases the pain. So I would be very, very skeptical. I mean, those guys, I would be very, very skeptical about uh, putting a resolution out to do something against 
something that they have fought for for so long. I, well, I understand, but here's, here's part of what's going on with this. There are some psychiatrists, I heard two of them on a, on a program uh, just this week, and they say this, it is known that people that, that use marijuana have a higher propensity to violence than people that don't. And, and a lot of the shootings in the schools are, are related to drug use and drug abuse. And we, that's why we need, to, we need to clamp down on it hard here. Uh, I'm sympathetic to those people who think this is doing them good. There are psychosomatic uh, benefits that some people think they get from the use of, of uh, that particular drug. And I don't have a problem with the fact that they, they think they get that. But I, I want... I don't want the legislature to open the door. I heard a state senator this week, the one senator who voted against expanding Medicaid, or the two senators that voted against expanding Medicaid this last week, but he said this. He said, yes, it's coming at us in Raleigh. We're going to be, have to be voting on this. And he said, I would imagine this is going to work in North Carolina like it does in most other states. First, we make it medical marijuana, and within a few years, we've got recreational marijuana. Folks, here's the problem. Your kids can't get a job if they're smoking this stuff and they're tested. There are a lot of laws that, that, that say that, you know, you can't get a job with this. If you want to protect children, then you need to start doing away with this stuff. And we need to start now. So I would my motion, Mr. Chairman, back to that. Uh, I move that we send a resolution to the our legislatures, to the legislature as a whole, Speaker of the House, and a speaker pro tem of the Senate uh, opposing the legalization of marijuana in North Carolina. And you can say it just that way. We don't have to hammer medical marijuana if that offends some of you. But I say we send a resolution opposing the legalization in North Carolina. Do we have a second? Yeah, I'll second it with the understanding we, we really don't talk about medical. Because I think the way, if you keep it general and just hammer the, the, uh, the part where marijuana tends to become more recreational. And I agree, that is, will be the downfall. I mean, we are, it's already... The, the, problem, Stan, is the, the problem is that the bill that's pending is for medical, medical marijuana. So well, if you're not going to be specific about that, then you're just wasting your time. No, we're, I don't think you're wasting your time. I know I you don't. I think you're setting a, a precedent that we are against recreational marijuana here in Beaufort County. And I, I think it's, uh, I mean, it, the whole idea of marijuana is to, to remove you from reality. And it will destroy brain cells. And we don't need Americans any more stupid than they already are. Well, I, I don't have a problem with, with targeting medical marijuana. But I think if you just say, we oppose the legalization of marijuana, most people are going to get the message that we're, you know, we're opposing this, and if you're going to make it legal, you need to clamp down on it really hard and make it difficult to get instead of everybody swaggered into their doctor's office saying, give me a prescription. <laughs> I don't have one thing to say. Good, you said that uh, people who smoke weed uh, 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 more violent. No, I think a guy full of uh, vodka is meaner than someone. <laughs> well, I understand. I understand, but these guys were speaking not about the vodka is a little more immediate. They were talking about the long-term prolonged use. I don't, have a, I don't have a problem with what you're trying to do. I understand what you're saying, but I do have a problem. I mean, and this is something that just hadn't come up this year. Those veterans have been fighting for this for years, and you know that because you and I sat in one of their meetings at, in Raleigh, at one of our, uh, well, I think it was Raleigh, that they was talking about medical marijuana. And they had some soldier there was talking about how it, how it helped them. Some even said it helped the eyesight. Maybe I need some. I don't know. <laughs> but, but the thing about it is something, something that they fought for for so long, I would hate. I would hate for Beaufort County to stand up and be in opposition to something that they, I mean, they believe in. 
they need. And and something and that's right, something that they think they need, or I don't know whether they need it or not. Well, well I think you hit the nail on the head. They think they need it, yeah. and, I, and I'm sympathetic to people that are in that kind of pain. But you just had a guy here in North Carolina about three years ago that was on a shooting range, and a fellow was trying to mentor him. They were both veterans. They both had tough times. And the guy killed him right there on the shooting range, his mentor that was trying to help him. That was exactly. You know, that happened in North Carolina. Drug related. Drug related. So the, we, we don't, you know, everybody wants to be kind with this. And, and, I, and, I, and I'll just tell you, I'll be perfectly honest, my opinion is uh, that, it, that medical marijuana is a great excuse for legalizing marijuana. That's, and I, I don't like that because I, I don't think there's a medical benefit. I've never heard a doctor say that there was a medical benefit. They talk about the psychological, psychosomatic benefits, what they think it's doing for them, you hit the nail on the head. So I propose the resolution just say that we're opposed to the legalization of marijuana and let the legislature worry about the details. They're going to do that anyway. All right. Um, years ago, we had liquor by the drink, and it was all around us. So we passed it, and it's probably bad, but it's passed. And years ago, we had the lottery. It was all around us, and we passed that. And everybody's playing. It's bringing in money. I'm not playing. Well, not everybody, but a lot of people do. And so now, medical marijuana is all around us, and it's going to be another... I mean, what if we reactivate the farming community with this stuff? Uh, it's got to be made somewhere, uh, grown somewhere, and we have good soils for it. There are more benefits that I think we need to look at, and if, if you want to call it medical marijuana, when you're clumping it all into one thing, I'm not going to vote for that because I think an 85-year-old person have joint pain, if they, they can get any relief whatsoever, by eating a gummy or whatever, I'm all for it. And, and it, uh, it keeps him from taking any kind of hard pain pills, which causes a lot of trouble. And we've seen how much trouble it's led to fentanyl abuse. And there's your problem. And that's what we got to target. I think the other stuff, I mean, think of all the jail uh, space that we free up by uh, t getting these people, uh, keeping them, folks out of jail that just have a, a marijuana charge. So I think saying it like that, I'm not for it, uh, because that's not what the bill in, in Raleigh says. It's medical marijuana, and there's a whole lot of restrictions. People who have seen this thing says there's so many restrictions to it, the most normal people can't just waltz in there and get a, a card that allow them to do it, you know, to get this stuff. So. I think I think that sends a bad message to our uh, Raleigh representatives, and they'll be, you know, oh, okay, they're against it, and I'm going to vote against it. I, I don't, I, I don't like that. I think they need to, need some more uh, thought about this thing. Well, you know, I'm against the illegal use of drugs. Marijuana is one of those drugs, and and everybody wants to sit around and want to make excuses for why it ought to be legal and we ought to be using it and all that. But the record shows that there's no real good benefit other than some people think it help them. If we've got it all around us, he can drive to Virginia, he can drive to South Carolina, and he can get his mar medical marijuana in those places and places where it's legal. We don't have to open our doors to be selling it and using it here in North Carolina. It has damaged too many families. It has destroyed too many people. And I know a lot of these people. And I'm beginning to wonder, you know, you, you, we sat here and talked about jobs for people in Beaufort County. Guess what? The biggest problem that an employer has in Beaufort County, getting them past the drug test. That's the biggest, it's not education, it's not skill. It's getting them past the drug test. We need, we need to start doing something. If you want to protect people, instead of throwing money at them, let's put this regulation on them. And I'll tell you one other thing, and the, and the DA alluded to it the other day when he was here. Sixty-something jails been shut down in the last ten years in North Carolina. A part of our, our lobbying, when we get to that part for discussion, we need to build a prison just for drug uh, drug dealers. And when you get in there, you're not coming out. We've had to close prisons in North Carolina because you can't keep drugs out of them. 
Well, by the time you go through the three portals to get into my prison, no drugs are going to be getting in there. It can be stopped. It's a matter of having the will. It's a matter of stopping the money that's in the drug business. It's all driven by money. We're all familiar with prohibition. We've seen the movies. We've read the articles. We've seen it. It was ran on It was ran on bribes to public officials. Well, how do you think the drug industry is run? It's no different. We need to stand up and start doing something about this. Hood, would you uh, consider changing your motion to say you support America, medical marijuana, but not total legalization? Well, I don't know that I want to say I even support medical marijuana, but if that's the only way you can get something passed, we'll play with the words on it. But uh, I would be willing to say heavily restricted use of medical marijuana or heavily regulated use of marijuana and opposed to the sale of any other marijuana. I could go with that. Uh, can I speak? Yes. Yeah, I, I'd, I'd like to have that kind of language in of medical marijuana. And as, as we've just heard from Randy, that uh, uh, that is on the docket up there. The thing that we're doing is we're conflating one with the other. I still will argue that recreational marijuana is an evil. It is a, a dramatic evil. It is a gateway drug. It is a powerful narcotic. And I don't want North Carolina easily moving from something that is helpful to something that is very, very harmful. I mean, marijuana is a narcotic, full bore narcotic. And it, it gets a real good rap with a lot of people. That it's, it's really not that bad. Everybody does, it's fun, it's cool. I will argue with Hood that it makes people violent. I don't know, maybe it does now. It didn't back in the 70s and 60s. But I will tell you this, it was a narcotic then. It's much more powerful now. It is a nar narcotic now. And it, and it is diminishing people's intelligence, their ability to, to, to think, to even make change. Deductive reasoning is, is, is terrible. And I tell you, if I, if I know somebody s smokes marijuana on a regular basis, I wouldn't hire them because their ability to focus would be non-existent. And for, for what I, I have to have people do, you don't even get a chance to make it half right. You've got to get it full right or it doesn't work. So, you know, that's life. You know, and, and we can't, right now in America, we're kind of halfway moving through things. Uh, marijuana is, is one of those things that helps us halfway move through things and feel good about ourselves. We, we, we shouldn't feel good about ourselves right now when it comes to getting real work done. Katie, the, the biggest lobby against marijuana is the alcohol industry. So yeah, yeah, if you put yeah. if you put alcohol in there, I'll vote for that. Well, I'll get rid of all of it. You know, think, think about alcohol and you'll never get rid of it. It has been part of our society since our inception as a nation. They used to used to take the corn because they couldn't do anything else with it and they would uh, ferment it and reduce it down to alcohol and it was became currency. So uh, that is something that uh, we're not going to get rid of. Historically, it's going to never go away. <laughs> I, 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 I agree. Uh, alcohol is just as bad. I, I will place. support a resolution that is against recreational use of marijuana. I will not support a resolution that is against medical marijuana. The overwhelming evidence from the medical community is the benefits for certain people outweigh the risks. It's overwhelming. I beg to disagree. The overwhelming well, evidence from the users is the benefit, not no. from the medical community, because all of the research from the medical community goes in the other direction. Well, but which one I, of research I, you want to read? I'm willing. Uh -huh. I'm will. I'm willing to to use your language, but I also want in there the res heavily restricted use of medical marijuana. Yes. Well, based on, that? based on what I've read up to this point, it is there's only 10 licenses that's going to be available to grow and process the marijuana, a maximum of 10. So it uh, is going to be heavily regulated, but it's also going to be just like everything else. I mean, uh, if somebody can grow it and there's a buyer for it, they're going to buy it. So, the, I think, I where think are we on the motion? We've got, we've got about three different I items. Think, I think the motion is we, we are against recreational use of marijuana, and we're, but we 
do not oppose heavily regulated use of medical marijuana. Yeah, I can go with that. Okay. Uh, and yeah, and uh, and we need to have some some language in there where there's no transition. Because that's the problem. It's a transition phase. Well, we, you know, I, I think I think the problem with a lot of our resolutions is we try to we try to go way down too deep in the in the weeds. Uh, if we want to get somebody's attention, I think we need to keep it just as stated, short and simple. Yeah, I don't have a problem with that. I mean, after all, you're dealing with elected officials, and you want to be short and simple. Okay. All right. Got a motion. <laughs> we oppose the recreation passage of any legislation that would provide for recreational use of medical marijuana. We are not opposed to medical marijuana provided it's heavily regulated. Yeah. Okay. So you made the motion and Hood, you've seconded it. Yeah. So that means you've withdrawn your other motion. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Any further discussion? All those in favor, raise your right hand. Okay, those opposed. Okay. Now, you know, the next part of this is how do you want to proceed with lobbying uh, uh, the legislature on the harshness, and that's the right word, the harshness of drug laws for simplification and, and firm sentences. Well, are you going to Raleigh on Assembly Day? Mm -hmm. Who, who's going besides me? I'm going. Okay. We can we can express huh? we can express our concerns over that. Part of this part of the success in this is prison space. We have a lot of prison space. No, we don't. That they closed them down. We don't have a lot of prison open space. Back up, well, I, I want to build a prison because they're going to have excuses for not reopening some of these prisons, and maybe they can find some that they can reopen. But I want prisons that are dedicated for drug salesmen. Right, I'm, I'm okay with that too, but it reminds me to use existing prisons and retrofit them to be what they need. I mean, I, I okay, uh, uh, this, the, we got it. You're any, 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 that, yes, uh, any, uh, any uh, commissioner, what, why don't you put two minutes? Papers so that we can have when we go. All right. Okay, we're down to commissioner's comments. Mr. Any, Chairman, Mr. Chairman, just real quick. I'm sorry. Are, are you, uh, is the board okay with us taking that language and drafting something and sending it to you by email? Because we don't do this fairly quickly. It's going to get through the house and be passed because the yeah. Senate's already passed and it's sitting over at the house. Now. Okay. Yes. 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 Yeah. All right. Entertain a motion to adjourn. Right, I want my two minutes, and I'm going to take less than two minutes. All right. I'm going to time it. Minutes. I'm going to time it. One of the things that's happened in the government, and I've sat here tonight, grants. Grants have become an evil. They're a curse on the surface of government because somebody has always given us a grant to do something that we don't want to do, but it's free money. And I can see grants is becoming a bigger and bigger and bigger problem for local governments because... We've been dragged into three or four things here tonight that we never should have been dragged into. And it's because of free money and grants and people trying to get you to do things that you really didn't want to do to begin with. So that's my comment. Thank you very much. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Second. Second. Third, third. All those in favor, raise your right hand.